Thank you for joining me today. I am in the book of Exodus chapter 20. You'll remember that this is the passage where Moses delivers the Ten Commandments and uh, they are duplicated or reiterated uh, in uh, Deuteronomy in the early chapters there, chapter 5, I believe, 4 and 5. This particular passage uh, was the first time that the people of Israel, the Hebrew people, had an opportunity to actually hear the voice of God. And it frightened them. He spoke from uh, the mountain. Uh, there, was, uh, there was a rumbling, there was thunder, lightning, all kinds of, um, of, of demonstrations of his power and of his authority. And in the midst of all of it, they said to Moses, uh, you speak to us. Uh, we, we don't want to listen to his voice. And so as a result, Moses went up on the mountain and he brought back uh, not only recording the Ten Commandments, but all of the ceremonial law and uh, uh, the um, identification of all of the uh, pattern and plans for the tabernacle that would be given later. Now, in chapters 20 through 23 or 24, uh, we have the basic ceremonial law, civil law, I should say, that uh, would govern Israel and Judah for the next several hundred years. Now, it wasn't, uh, uh, it wasn't only that, of course, the, as time went on, the scribes and the, uh, and the priests would sit down and, and meditate upon that and say, well, in this circumstance, this is where that law applies, and in that circumstance, that's where that law applies. But the point was that this was a, is it, it was a civil law based um, or, or built upon uh, the idea that these people need, needed to live within the same country together. And when these things, uh, when, when people violate the laws, then these are the consequences that come from that. And so you'll see in these particular chapters uh, uh, points of justice and, uh, and equity. You will see uh, the command to bring uh, the people before the Lord three times during the year, the uh, various feasts that they are having. And, and these are the things that are the basis upon which our laws as a nation are built themselves. Since we come out of a Judeo-Christian background, uh, we recognize that the law of Moses was the foundation for our system of, uh, of laws and uh, our constitution here in the United States, as it should be. And so the, the important thing for us to understand, though, is that here were people who didn't want to hear from God himself because it frightened them. And so he, God gave to them a civil law by which they would govern themselves. We live in the same kind of, a, of a situation. There are a lot of people today who don't want to listen to the voice of God. There are a lot of people today who would rather say, no, uh, we're not interested in who this God of Israel is. And so as a result, they, uh, they, they turn away from him. But they are still subject to the, the civil law that he has established. Now, it's also interesting here that in, uh, in Exodus chapter 20, verse 19, they tell Moses, we, we want you to go there. We, we want you to be the uh, intermediary. We don't want to have to have to listen to him. And so as a result, Moses went back up on the mountain and he went up for, for 40 days. And during that time, they decided that Moses was, uh, had been killed, that God had uh, killed him. And so they made for themselves an idol that they turned around and said, this is the God that brought you out of Egypt. And, uh, and so, of course, Moses was angry when he came back down from the mountain. And then he turned around and went back up there for another 40 days. The point is that even though these people called upon 
Moses to be their intermediary, and he gave the civil law as that which would govern them so that they wouldn't have to hear the, the powerful and terrorizing voice of God himself. Even though they called upon him to do that, uh, and he did, they still rejected now, the whole reason we need a civil law is because the human heart is deceitful and desperately sick, according to Jeremiah. And we need this law in order to govern our lives. And so it's important that we who are citizens, at least of this country, and I'm speaking from the United States, but we who are citizens of this country recognize our subject, uh, that we are subjects to the law, but we also need to recognize that we're subjects to the law that God has given in the scripture. Those two things are the, are the things that keep us from having to hear his voice and being frightened day by day by day because of it. Father, we ask you to grant to us the grace to see that, that the laws that have been established have been established for our good. Oh, we recognize that there are some laws that are unrighteous and some laws that, have, um, that, that are obsolete. But we thank you, Father, for this system and we praise you for leading us and directing us as your people. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. I hope you have a great day now.